What's up guys, it's your boy Dime and welcome back to Dime Up Cuz. Before we start the video, man, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride and be with your boy Dime. Today we're going to be talking about Zach Levine and, uh, shoot, the Los Angeles Clippers because I'm the biggest hater of that team. But first, Zach Levine. Now, Zach Levine is a very good NBA player. He has improved all the years he's been in the NBA. He's improved from like 16 to now like 27, I think. 27.7 point, points. So, yeah, man, he's been going real good. He's been doing really nice. He's been really nice. And the Clippers, I mean, he they went against the Clippers. Uh, they, they lost. They lost but only by three, and Zach Levine had a really good shot. I felt felt like that that he can take that shot, and he can make that shot any day. He airballed it, of course. Um, and they lost that game. Now, that's going to tie in with the Clippers. And I'll get into that. Woo -woo. But Zach Levine, to me, is a very good NBA player. And, um, shoot. On a team like the Bulls, he's not going to get to where we want him to be. Like, Zach Levine has taken that step, but he's not on the team to help him capitalize on that step. You understand what I'm saying? So, basically, I just I read this article. It's from the Chicago Sun-Times. I've been reading through it and stuff. Whoop -whoop -whoop, and I've come to the conclusion that um, the Bulls at need to trade... Uh, Zach Levine, because it's not working. Uh, he, for their sake and his sake as well. Because I don't want to see him waste his prime in Chicago on a bad team. And I don't want him to become like a next Bradley Beal, basically. Because Bradley Beal right now is wasting his prime in Washington. And I don't want to see Levine waste his prime in Chicago. Um... And as I all know that uh, if they don't make the playoffs this season, the Bulls are going to trade uh, Zach Levine. That's very possible. Or or they could trade him during the draft and get another lottery pick because this upcoming draft is stacked. Like, they have really good players in this draft. So they might be shooting for a higher pick, maybe a top five, top ten pick. Um, but who are they going to get in return? Because Levine's stock is rising, and that means money money wise as well so um and also they he, they could also trade him before march i think march 25th is uh the trade deadline for this season so they, it's possible that they could trade him before march 25th or on march 25th but i feel like they would trade him if they don't make the playoffs this season they are going to trade him during the draft so they can get a, an extra lottery pick if they don't already have one and get rid of that salary to maybe even sign a a, a player because i don't know i don't know if the 2021 free agency class is good i feel like it's dry i think most of the players that were supposed to be in it have already resigned and everything like that so basically it's dry there's really nobody that they need so i feel like them getting rid of zach levine and then bringing in a young a younger player uh would be the best fit for them or they could just keep Zach Levine and waste his prime. Because GMs have to think of their of the team's sake and the player's sake. We don't want a player to just rot away in a place. Nobody wants to see that. With the talent Zach Levine has, we don't want him to rot away in Chicago as they are right now. Now, something could hope happen in the future. During free agency, a trade goes down, something happens, and the Bulls become good at least pretty decent, right? 8C, 7C. That would still be wasting his prime because I feel like he needs to be competing on a contending team or a team that is going to make top five to top top three in the uh, in whatever conference. And um, the, the, the young core is pretty good. I really like their young core with uh, Kobe White. Kobe White, I really like Kobe White. Patrick Williams. People were real skeptical on them getting Patrick Williams, but Patrick Williams is good defensively. I think in like the time that he guarded LeBron when they went against the Lakers, he held him to like a few turnovers. Like he was like 0 for 6 or whatever when Patrick Williams guarded him with 1 for 6. So 
yeah, man, like Patrick Williams is going to be a pretty good player uh, in the future, man. So, um, and it's very possible that the Bulls stay lottery bound and um, they might trade Zach Levine during the draft uh, to get a, another lottery pick because this 2021 draft class is coming in like Kay Cunningham, all these guys, they are, I hope they're going to be some dogs, man. So, uh, yeah, man, let's move on to the Clippers. Now, the Clippers, as y'all know, I'm the number one Clippers hater. Not really, though. But anyway, so the Clippers, uh, would you say struggle, have been struggling in close games. Um, they've been losing close games. They uh, they got blown out by the Mavericks. We don't want to talk about, they don't want to talk about that. So let me go through their past, one, two, three, four, five games, right? So yesterday, last night, they won against the Clippers, 130 to 127. Now, with a team like the Clippers and a team like the Bulls, okay, this is where I tell you this all ties in together. Should this game have been close? Should this game have been close? With the defensive prowess the team, the Clippers have, should this game have even been that close? I'm just saying. Then... Uh, Warriors versus Clippers. I think they gave up like a 20-point lead that game. Uh, then they went against the Warriors two nights late. Uh, two nights before, they went against the Warriors on the 8th, on the 6th. They won by 7. Should that game have been that close? No. They lost against the Spurs on the 5th. That was the first game of the back-to-back. -back. Should they have lost that game? No. Now, the Suns. Should they have, they won the game, the Clippers won. Okay, the Clippers won, but should they have lost, but should they have, on, but should the, should have the game been not that close? It was only a five point difference. With the defensive prowess this team has, should that game have been that close? I'm, I'm, I'm saying, yes, the Suns are a pretty good team. They have Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden, uh, I said, right, DeAndre Aiden, and all those guys, yeah. But defensively, the Clippers are better. Okay? So, coming to the bigger conclusion. The Clippers' defense is not as good as many say it is. Bruh. Just saying. Just saying. I know I might get a lot of hate for this, but the, de the Clippers' defense isn't as good as many people say it is. In these past five games, the highest... Um, the highest point they the points they've won by is five. The most they've lost by is ten. And the Warriors, they're not pretty that good defensively, and they beat the Clippers by ten. And the highest that the Clippers have won on these past five games are only by five. So I'm just saying the Clippers defense is not as good as many people say it is. And um Paul George should have been top three in MVP races. But anyway, man. Um, anyway, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride, to be with your boy Don. And uh, yeah, man. Uh, I made like a TikTok. I might put it in the description below. I've seen some people comment on uh, some videos that they were from TikTok. So yeah, man. I want to thank y'all for that 100. Uh, Coming to the channel, checking the chat, uh, going to check it out and stuff. So yeah, man. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride. And how can you like the video and not like it? Peace out, 100. <laughs>